Okay, so let's start. A very good evening, all of you. Okay, so let's start with bonsai techniques. So uh, to start with, let's first know what is bonsai. This is very important. Okay, let's first know from where has the word been derived? What is the meaning of the word? That is very important because you can get questions related to this, right? Okay. So by seeing this picture here, I hope you can understand that this is actually a big tree. But this big tree is in the form of a small one. Okay, bonsai has come from, has been derived from two words, bon and sai. Okay, bon means a tray or low-sided pot. Look at this. Look at this structure. A tray or low-sided. It's not too high. See, it's low. Low-sided pot and sai means a planting or plantings. Okay. It is a very popular Japanese word. It is the Japanese art of growing and training miniature trees in pots. Okay. Developed from the traditional Chinese art form of penjing. Traditional art form is penjing. P-E-N-J-I-N-G from China. It's a traditional art form of China. From there, Japan has taken it and Japan is doing this. They have developed this. Huh? And it is popularly now known as a Japanese art. Okay, so what is it? A Japanese art form using miniature trees grown in containers. Till here it is clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Just one second. Yeah. In English, the term bonsai is often used to lose, use loosely to refer to or in reference to all miniature scale trees. Now, when we use the word bonsai, when we are using the word bonsai, we actually refer to all miniature trees, which are being grown or cultivated in small pots, right? So uh, to do bonsai or to develop the art of bonsai, we should know which type of plants are suitable for bonsai making. That is very important because, you know, if you are taking certain types of plants which are not at all suitable for bonsai formation, then your absolute venture will be a failure. So we will have to choose those particular plants which are made for bonsai development. Not all plants are fit for bonsai making. Okay. So please look into it. Although the suitability of plants for developing as bonsai has been tested in Japan, consisting mostly of subtropical and temperate plants. Normally subtropical and temperate adult, plants are used. Yes, please say. Yes, what is your doubt? Please say. Yes, what is your doubt? Okay, let me continue. I think you have muted yourself. Now see, very little information is available on the response to the growth of tropical trees in miniature form. 
right now this is an important part you should know late shri vp agnio 3 has developed a technique of dwarfing trees now this can come for a question who has pioneered this thing okay little bit of importance we should give to this man he has developed this art for us so you should know his name late shri vp agnio 3 this person has developed a technique of dwarfing trees commonly found in this country right the suitability of a tree to develop as a bonsai depends on various factors now we will study about these factors a little what are these factors the first and foremost point is first point is what the plant should be hardy herbaceous plants are not suitable for bonsai making the plant should be hardy so that it can be grown in a small container for many years with all the manifestations of a living plant ma'am one second tell ma'am see if you are planning to make a bonsai with herbaceous plants it is not possible why because herbs or soft plants herbaceous plants are soft plants they are usually annual in nature they will not live for years after years so you will have to choose hardy trees or hardy plants which will grow in containers for many years it will not dry, uh, die and and another thing it will not perish okay so hard so hardiness of the plant is an important criteria okay next is the trunk should develop a natural appearance you know this is the trunk of a tree this is the canopy this is the trunk this part is the trunk this trunk of the tree should have a natural look it should look natural it should have a natural look now see if you look into this picture see here if you look into this picture this part only if you see only this part do you really think that it is growing on a pot it looks like as if it is going in the uh, it is growing in nature it is growing in the field it is growing at the side of the road isn't it this is having a natural appearance this entire branch its canopy everything is having a natural appearance so the trunk should develop a natural appearance third is the branches should grow in natural but artistic forms this part we will discuss later this artistic form part we will talk about a little while later okay the uh, when the trunk is growing naturally it's obvious that the branches will also have a very natural look it's obvious and if it is not having you should know the know the technique of know the art of or know the technique of making it look natural right next is the growth of the plant and its appearance should be harmonious with the shape of the container very very important point suppose you have a very small container then you should plan to grow medium size tree here medium size you should not plan to grow very huge tree over here you should know the size of your container in the pot in which you are growing and accordingly you should plan next is the miniature plant showing seasonal variation in growth and flowering is a very interesting feature of bonsai see many plants many plants have seasonal variation almost all plants have seasonal variation like in winter they will shed leaves then again in the spring time lovely beautiful new leaves come up in the monsoon they look very fresh and different so the seasonal <coughs> variation is there in during the growing season they look bountiful they droop down with their fruits and flowers so the seasonal variation is there so the miniature plant showing seasonal variation in growth and flowering is very interesting in 
bonsai. This should also be noted. Okay, next is what? Plants of low height and strong trunk, thick at the base are good for bonsai. So what type of plant are best for bonsai? Plants which are known to attain a low height. You know that this plant will never attain a very big height. So it's good to cultivate that type of a plant. So you choose a plant which generally attains a low height and you know those plants which are very strong, which are having very strong trunk. Some plants you know, na, which are very strong, like teak, sal, then uh, certain pine varieties. They are very strong. Terminalia, these you know, trees are known to have strong trunk. So you will choose those type of trees and they should have a thick base. If the basal part is very thin, this is common sense, isn't it? If the base, if the base is not thick, how will it bear the weight of the branches and the whole tree? It will collapse, isn't it? If the base is very thin and the tree is a huge tree, will it be able to bear that load? Will it be able to take the load? Obviously, it will collapse. So the base should be thick. Right, so these points are to be kept in mind, very important. Next is what, see? Next point you see, the most popular plants used for bonsai are ficus, that is anjir, ficus, juniper, okay, bonsai juniperus we call, bougainvillea, duranta, jasminum, moraya, Amelia patens, hibiscus rosa sinensis, juniper sinensis, neem, pine, all these are pomegranate, poinsettia. From here, I know you must be thinking that why is ma'am telling so many names? How will we remember? You don't need to remember so many names. Let me tell you, for your exam purpose, you just remember three to four names. See, these names are easy, isn't it? Neem, pine, you have heard of these names n number of times in your life. Pomegranate. These are very easy names. Sapota. You know these names, isn't it? From here, you choose four names which you can remember for your exam. Ficus. Anjir, you have learnt about this. Bougainvillea, very common. See, this is a neem bonsai, this one. This one is a neem bonsai. Uh, this one is a pine bonsai. See, these so these, some of these which are easier for you to remember, you choose. I have given many so that you can choose, so that you have good options to choose from, right? So these plants are known to make good bonsai. These plants are very good in the, when it comes to making of good bonsai, okay? Now we'll come to growing of bonsai. So first step, you know what are bonsai. Second step, what is it? You know which plants are to be chosen. So two things you are done with. Next thing, <clears throat> you will have to know the art of growing the bonsai. You should know how our bonsai is grown, isn't it? So plants suitable for growing as bonsai are planted in small containers. So first part is planted in small containers. We are not going to take very big, huge pots for growing these because we don't want this plant to grow much. See, if we have very big pot like this, okay, the roots will have very big space to grow and the tree will also grow very big. Instead, if we have a smaller pot, they will not spread a lot down. This way they will not spread a lot. Here also the growth will be restricted. So the plant will be smaller. In tropical climate, the monsoon is the best season for transplanting. So first point is, first what will you do? You will plant it in small containers. Second, you will wait for monsoon to come. Because monsoon gives you the best 
season monsoon offers you the best season for bonsai planting okay it is the best season for transplantation for making bonsai plants growing wild or seedlings grown in the nursery for several years should be carefully uprooted third step what you will do you will carefully uproot them grown in ordinary pots for a year or two and then planted in a shallow container shallow means small container if you are you should first uproot them from where they are naturally growing in the nursery or in the wild wherever then you will grow them in ordinary not specialized for bonsai in ordinary pots for some years maybe a, a year or two then you will plant it in your desired container okay plants may also be obtained from layering of a large branch grafting or by raising seedlings in a pot you can directly sow the seeds onto a pot and grow the plant layering and grafting these are procedures in plant breeding where <coughs> uh, two desired parts of two desired plants are made to come in contact with each other and then they are grown together they form a single plant right next see you should know the various styles of bonsai this is very important please note the styles of bonsai are very important what are the different styles and how do they look i give you a minute time to look into the pictures <clears throat> very important look into the pictures do they resemble anything or they are little new to you they are new ma'am exactly they are new because you children you children are new to this course okay now we will talk about the styles one by one wait let me let me uh, reduce your tension a little you must be thinking that do you need to draw all these in your exams or not let me tell you you don't need to draw all these at all no one in your exam will ask you to draw all these uh, horrible pictures in your exam you tell me who has so much of time to draw all these things this one this one is it a joke no one will ask you to draw all these things okay but but what they will ask you is the names of the styles so you will have to remember these names that is important one first is wind blown don't have to remember these names these names are difficult to remember isn't it tell me frankly these names are difficult to remember no um yes ma'am kinagashi then mayogi hankanyai yes, what type of a name like when i first when i was like you you know in my ug i laughed a lot listening to these names you know i i used to laugh a lot i never used to remember these names or i faced a lot of difficulty in remembering these names because these uh, dialects these accents are very uncommon to us so you don't need to remember these names but what you need to remember is these names okay first is wind blown wind blown is which one fukinagashi my goodness fukinagashi is this one see when when a tree is subjected to very high speed of wind it looks like this isn't it as if it is blowing in one direction so this look like, looks like this like this it looks wind blown second is informal upright that is mayogi mayogi is this it is informally going up it is not so straight once this side that side see first this side then that side again this side informally going upright next is semi casted han ken gai han ken gai is which one this is cascade is a fountain right it is it is looking like a half fountain like this it is drooping down 
Next is cascade. Can guy this one fully bending down. Okay. Next style is what the clasped or the clasp to stone or ishisuki. Ishisuki is which one? This one. There is no special explanation to it. Just look at the photo and learn the name. That's all. Next is broom. Broom, everyone knows. What is a broom? It's a jadu. Isn't it? Broom, everyone knows. Where is broom? Broom means hockey dachi. Hockey dachi, where is hockey dachi? This one. See, it, it, it resembles a duster or a broom. <clears throat> Next is formal upright, chokan. Where is this? See, this is not bending in any direction. Straight like a good boy going up. No bending looking here and there. Straight going up, formal one. Next is slanting. Easy word. Slanting, you know. Slanting is shakan. Where is shakan? This one. Just slanting, bend, tilted to one side. Right? Okay. Now see, <coughs> let me change the ink color. Okay. Now see, it is advisable to grow the plant in the ground for a year or two, which helps in developing a strong root system and healthy branches. Initially, if you remember here, I told you, see, after uprooting, it is grown for a year or two and then it is planted in the shallow container. Why is it like this? <coughs> this is because if you grow the plant in uh, separately in a separate pot for a year or two, what benefits you are going to get? It will develop strong root system and healthy branches. These two things. Okay. They are then it is then n is missing they are then transferred into a container after pruning pruning is cutting into proper shape pruning the roots and branches the plants grown in pots may be planted directly in the container after this uh, growing this one this year or two after this period you don't need any other processing you can directly Plant it in your desired container. Okay. Now, before we come to this lawn, okay, we will quickly once. Talk about the techniques. Then we will. Come to this lawn. Please note down these techniques. Okay, these techniques are for bonsai, raising, to raise a bonsai you should have or you should follow certain techniques. These are the techniques. Okay, first is what? First is what? Pruning. These are little important for your exams, so please take a note. What is pruning? Branches are pruned with scissors and other tools to adjust the shape of the tree. Hmm. So pruning is done in order to Adjust the shape of the tree. Okay. See, uh, these are done with tools like scissors. Hmm. 
who is this hem sundar i'm seeing constantly you are uh, creating scratches on the screen please don't do this see the writing part is getting disturbed please erase of these lines okay these are done with seasonal scissors a uh, young bonsai tree being pruned for the first time requires a lot of care while you are pruning it should be very careful you should not uh, cut off all the buds or important little miniature leaves sure so when you are first time pruning it pruning the little bonsai the young one should be very very careful right but once it becomes little older then you can be little uh, casual while pruning it but young bonsai pruning is very very difficult you should know how to do it you should be skilled enough to do it okay pruning helps control their size so why is it done it is done so next is done to control size okay it is done to control the size but its purpose is not to stunt a bonsai tree tree's uh, growth you are just controlling its size you are not uh, trying to make it look stunted hmm. you are just trying to give it a shape done to control the size and give it a shape proper pruning promotes healthy growth of bonsai always remember proper pruning promotes healthy growth of a bonsai can it's enough if you know this much you don't need much to know next is what wiring next point is wiring what is wiring now wiring involves okay let me write next is wiring wiring involves attaching wires okay attaching wires to the trunk and branches to create a please note these down because you will need it desired turn correct an unnatural curve to correct an un natural curve so what does this mean see when a tree is growing you cannot direct the tree to grow straight or to move first right and then curve towards the left it will grow in its own way you cannot control that it will grow in its own pattern known fashion but if you want a proper shape what will you do you will tie or you will attach wires to the trunk 
in the shape you want. Maybe you want the plant to grow straight. So you will tie the branches in such a manner that it will grow straight. So unnatural curving is stopped here. Hmm. So what type of wires are used? What type of wires are used here? Let's see. Aluminium or copper wires are used. Hmm. Wires are used for the purpose. Okay. Aluminium wire is always remember easier to manage. It is easy to cut. So beginners are always suggested to use aluminium wires. <coughs> okay. And different and wires of different thickness are available. Wires of varied thickness. Varied thickness are available. You will have to Choose according to your need. Okay. Bonsai growers have to be very careful to remove wiring when not needed. Hmm. Another point to be kept in mind, wires are to be removed when time comes. Why? Because if the wires are left for too long, they can start eating into the enlarging branches and they can injure the plant. So the wires are to be taken off before it starts injuring the plant. Your intention is not to injure the plant. Your intention is to maintain the plant properly. That is why you are using the wire. You are not using the wire to injure the plant. So wiring is basically a way of producing a more pleasing shape. So if I just use a different color, it is basically what way of producing way of producing a more pleasing shape. This is the motto of wiring. Why is wiring done? Okay, this is why wiring is done. Next, what do we do? Next point is repotting. Repotting. Okay. Listen to this. The key to having a healthy bonsai is to keep its roots fit. Any plants, not only bonsai, if the roots are healthy, the plants will automatically be healthy. If the roots are uh, wilting, dying off, plants will also die. Okay. This, in order to keep the roots healthy, repotting is very important. Okay. Repotting is done to Keep the roots healthy. Okay. Here, overgrown roots overgrown. Roots are pruned, okay, and replanted in new soil. And replanted in new soil, okay. Now, see, first of all, the bonsai must be removed from the pot, and the soil is carefully cleaned from the root. The plant, the pot in which it was already growing, they should be carefully removed from the pot and the soil is also cleaned from the roots, right? The roots are then trimmed 
Now, when replanting, you have to be very careful not to leave any pockets of air in the soil. When you are repotting it, that is replanting it, air should not have air, uh, soil should not have air pockets. Okay, I'm writing this so that you don't forget. Soil should not have air pockets when you are replanting it. Remember, when you are replanting it, there should be no air pockets in the soil. Hmm. This, it, it doesn't mean you will have to have new <coughs> pots every time. Same pot may be used again and again. Okay. But these points are to be kept in mind when you are doing, when you are working. Okay. So if these points are kept in mind, you can really have a beautiful bonsai growing. So these are the three most important techniques for growing bonsai. This is more than enough. You need not know any other uh, techniques for uh, growing bonsai. Sometimes you will also see other uh, terms like defoliation, grafting. These are also important. I'm not telling these are not important, but not as important as these. These means which we have just uh, discussed. Okay. Defoliation or using a defoliant is what? A defoliant is any herbicidal chemical sprayed or dusted. See, you can also add a fourth one. What is that? That is defoliation. Hmm, what is defoliation? Defoliation. It is defoliation is a defoliant is sprayed. Sprayed. Okay. Let me write a defoliant. D-E-F-O. A defoliant is Spread. Why is it spread? One, what is a defoliant, by the way? A defoliant is a herbicidal chemical. Herbicidal chemical. Now you can ask, ma'am, what is a herbicidal chemical now? Herbicidal chemicals are weed killers. They kill the weeds. Okay. Hmm. These are weed killers. Weed, weeds are always unwanted, isn't it? You don't want the uh, weeds to grow and spoil the desired crops. Hmm. <coughs> so a defoliant is sprayed or dusted on plants or dusted on plants to cause their leaves to fall off. Hmm. Plants to cause their leaves to fall off. So this type of a defoliant is very important. Hmm. So any weeds and all which are growing can be got rid of by using defoliants. And then grafting is also sometimes done to produce small trees, okay, that uh, mimic the shape and style of mature full size trees. So these are the certain techniques. Okay, let me just write grafting also. Grafting, what is it done to produce? done to produce small trees, small trees that mimic 
that mimic the shape and style. Don't use this type of and in your exam. Ah, please write like this. Style of mature full size tree. Full size tree. So these are the certain techniques which you should know for bonsai growing. Right now we will talk about this. That was one part of our lecture. See, I first thought of uh, having two lectures with you, but then I thought, okay, you people are having a long weekend. Tomorrow is Independence Day. Today is a Sunday. So let's club the two lectures to one and let's have a compact single lecture. Next, so the second part of our lecture is lawn development and maintenance. How are lawns developed and how are they maintained? So this is a basic definition of lawn. You first should know what is a lawn. Huh? What is it? Lawn is a basic feature of garden. Lawns can be defined as green carpet. The ones who practice gardening at home, the ones who are having gardens at home in their natives or Anywhere, you must have seen carpets of grasses, isn't it? That is nothing but lawn. So what is it? It is defined as green carpet of a landscape, right? Lawn is a ground cover of grasses. It provides perfect setting for a flower bed, a border, shrubbery, or a specimen tree of a, or a shrub. So you first must have a lawn in order to grow your plants, right? Okay, so what is it? As we have just discussed, it's a green carpet. Lawn is the heart of a garden. Very true. Without this, you cannot have a garden. And holds pivotal importance, premier importance in adding beauty to the garden. True. Then lawn serve as base for flower bed. You cannot grow flower in the air, isn't it? Flower or any plant in the air. You need a base and lawn serves one of the best base for flower bed. Okay, it serves as a base for flower bed, a border, a shrubbery or a specimen tree. Besides having monetary value, lawn possesses aesthetic value. Aesthetic means what? This is aesthetic value, adding beauty to the garden. This is the aesthetic value. Aesthetic value of reducing tension of mind after a day's hard work. The ones who practice gardening with love, you know, I have heard people saying that after a day's long, uh, frustrating day, when I go and sit in my garden for some time with a cup of coffee, I feel relaxed, tension free. My mood, uh, my mood becomes good. I feel refreshed, all these things. So it adds to your health also. The beauty of any landscape is due primarily to the lawn. The lawn is foreground of the house and of every landscape picture and the setting for architectural and garden features. Right? Okay. So your syllabus wants you to know about development of lawn and its maintenance. Right? How are lawns developed? By seed. You can develop lawn by seed, by dibbling, by turfing, and by turf plastering. These four methods are there, which can be used to develop lawns. Fine? Okay. I have made it very short so that you don't get bored. You don't uh, feel bad that on a Sunday evening, what is ma'am doing? So you shouldn't feel like that. That is the very reason why I have cut it absolutely short. Okay. So first is by seed.
first point is by by seed the most popular grass suitable for seeding is dube grass remember these names are important please keep in mind dube grass that is cynodon dactylon cynodon dactylon is the the other name for dube grass grasses seeds of grasses are broadcast at the onset of monsoon at the rate 12 to 15 kilograms per hectare okay after seed sowing and light irrigation soil is rolled with the help of a roller seeds will germinate within 3 to 5 weeks maximum that is 1 to 1.5 months it takes to develop so two points you need to remember from here which type of grass is the best suitable that is cynodon dactylon or dube grass and what is the quantity used for sowing 15 12 to 15 kilograms per hectare and time taken is 1 to 1.5 months that is 3 to 5 weeks next is by dibbling what is that it is the best method of lawn establishment right rooted or unrooted grass cuttings are planted in slightly ground 7 to 10 cm apart sometimes rooted or sometimes unrooted grass cuttings simply cuttings are taken and planted no seed nothing and this within 5 to 7 weeks the grass is ready for first cutting so it's a quick one also you don't need to get hold of seeds and then if you get ready grasses whether rooted or unrooted doesn't matter you simply plant it and by 5 to 7 weeks it is ready for first cutting okay next point is what by turfing it is the quickest method for lawn preparation if somebody asks you which is the quickest method you will say it is turfing <coughs> okay grasses are cut into 4 to 6 cm long pieces for sowing purpose with stem and roots here also cuttings are used see 4 to 6 cm long cuttings are used for sowing purpose right turf is a piece of earth about 5 cm thickness with grass thickly grown over it thickly grown over it see this this area you concentrate on this see thickly grown no space left ha huh? right next is what the pieces may be small squares or in rolls of small width that is 30 cm selected small piece of grass should be cut uniformly thick selected from a place free from weeds and grasses along with soil are placed on prepared ground side by side closely why closely because if you leave space in between that carpet like appearance will not be there okay see grasses set within 15 days only quickest 15 days and ready to harvest by 3 months see it's ready to be harvested by 3 months only so fast hmm. next is what by turf plastering it is a good method for lawn preparation on due to less time lawn preparation on due to less time consumption similar to the previous one a paste is required by mixing garden soil fresh cow dung and water okay here a new thing has come up here a preparation of soil is being stressed on here so far you did not learn about this we did not talk about any preparation of soil here we are talking about what is it done garden soil is mixed with fresh cow dung and water okay bits of chopped up fresh roots and stem so rhizomes of dub grass that is cynodon dactylon just now we you have learned the name are mixed with the paste and the paste is spread evenly on the surface of the prepared ground after moistening the soil done 
the loan will be readily within uh, will be ready within 15 to 30 days by this method done okay so this is how we complete the development of loans the process of developing the loan next we'll talk about its care and maintenance Next, we'll talk about how to take care of these. How to take care of the loan which you have just prepared. Right? So, what are the methods of its care? Weeding, rolling, mowing, irrigation, scraping, and insect and disease management you don't need to know very big huge details for each of these what you need to know is very little don't have to break your head over all these terms don't think what is ma'am telling she's creating such big stories it's not that at all first is weeding i will teach you the, these topics in the easiest available form so that it doesn't become a burden on you. Weeding is what commonly found weeds in the lawns. When you are preparing a lawn, you will not definitely not want weeds to grow, jungly weeds to grow. So you will have to take care of them. Always remember, Cyperus rotundus is, a, is a very difficult to eradicate owing to its very deep root system. This, remember the name of this plant, Cyperus rotundus. This plant is a very popular weed, but it is very difficult to remove this weed because of its deep root system. So proper <coughs> weeding is very important. Weeding is to remove the weeds. Hmm. Commonly found weeds are Cyperus rotundus. Then uh, the common name is nutgrass. Huh. I'm just writing by the side. Common name is nutgrass. Then Saccharum spontaneum. If you forget the scientific name, doesn't matter. Just remember the common name. This is Kansa grass or Kans grass. Nut grass, Kans grass, okay. These are also very notorious, extremely notorious weeds, very difficult to remove. So, Manual weeding by long and pointed kurpi is generally practiced in lawn. Manually, you will have to do it. You will have to just take this weed and throw it away. Simply. Just pick it up. Wherever you see these weeds. Ma are, second, ma the weeds, the unwanted plants which are growing. Okay. You will simply go around, take a walk around your lawn. If you feel that unwanted plants are growing, simply pluck them and throw them. You cannot use machines because machine will not understand which is unwanted and which is wanted. Which one you like, which one you want to keep and which one you don't want to keep. So it's best you use your own hands. Manually you go around and you pluck the plants and simply discard them. This is called weeding. And weeding has to be done very frequently. Like if you say that, okay, ma'am, I have done weeding today. Again, one month later, I will do. In this one month time, all type of jungly plants can grow. You cannot stop them. So weeding has to be done very frequently. Say every uh, week you should go around your lawn to get these weeding done. Right? Understood? Next is rolling. Next is rolling. 
Rolling is to help the grass anchor itself securely and also to keep the surface leveled. If you if you have uneven surface, you use a roller on it. The roller makes the surface even, isn't it? So rolling. Rolling helps the grass. Anchor. Securely. And also. Helps in. Having a leveled surface. Okay. This is very essential to keep the lawn perfectly leveled because if the lawn is undulated, up and down, ups and downs, ups and downs are there, it looks horrible. Have you ever seen a garden having ups and downs? Never. Undulated gardens are not at all beautiful. And no plants will like growing there also. It is unsuitable for plants as well. So rolling is very important. It brings grasses in contact to the soil. Hmm. I'm writing it. It brings grasses in contact to the soil and to make them uniform. make them uniform besides leveling the ground. Besides leveling the ground. Okay. Next, what did we say? Mowing. Third is mowing. What is it? Proper mowing is one of the most important practice in keeping the lawn healthy. Hmm. How is it done? Mowing is done to ensure that the grasses are uniform. Hmm. They are uniform. Hmm. The grasses should not be allowed to grow more than five to six centimeters in length. Always remember this figure. They should not be allowed to grow more than five to six centimeters in length. Remember this, this is mowing. Okay, I'm just using one one sentence to describe so that it doesn't become difficult for you. Hmm. Next point is irrigation. Next, so this one was mowing, now is irrigation. What is it? Irrigation means you can understand it has got something to do with watering of the uh, lawn. Hmm. And this water requirement of the lawn also depends on the season. In heavy monsoon season, you don't need to water your lawn every day. Too much of water logging in the lawn will cause the grasses to die. Uh, the roots will. Uh, become soggy and it will die. So watering in summer at an interval uh, like three to five days interval watering in summer in 
three to five days interval. Remember this three to five days interval and winter 12 to 15 days interval. Winter in 12 to 15 days interval. Remember. Hmm. And what is the best method of irrigation? Sprinkler. Sprinkler is the best method. You can, it is best to sprinkle the water than to take a bucket of water and then throw the entire water at one place. What is the use in just throwing the entire water in one place? That part of the soil will become extremely moistened and that only those grasses will receive water. What about the rest? So it is very important to use a sprinkler and always remember flooding with hose pipe is also used in uh, irrigation, but care, care should be taken. You should not keep the field flooded. This is not a rice field that you will require to have ankle deep water. Flooding should not occur. Okay. Flooding. Back to the last slide, ma'am. Sorry. Please get back the last slide, ma'am. The second last point. Is this one. This one. Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. See, you don't worry. I will share everything with you. Okay. Uh, okay. Ma ah, don't don't worry at all. Uh, see, I will share this in my YouTube channel, and I will share the link with you people in the group. Okay. You can uh, okay, share this entire video. The ones who have not come to the class, maybe they have some problem. I also understand that is why I am recording the session. Okay. This rec this session is being recorded. This entire class will be uploaded. So anytime, anywhere, you can uh, look into these videos. Don't worry at all. Materials okay. are always given to you, dear. Don't worry at all. And we teachers are always there to help you out. So don't at all panic or don't at all become tense that from where will you get it like that. You just be happy to attend the uh, class. That's all. Should I change or should I keep? Uh, change, ma'am. Okay, fine. Next, we'll come to scraping. We are almost at the end. Next is scraping. What is scraping? Continuous rolling, mowing, all these things may result in the formation of a hard crust. Hmm. P-I-N-G, scraping. Scraping is done to get rid rid of the hard crust developed due to continuous mowing and rolling. If you are constantly rolling a surface, the surface becomes hard, isn't it? So in order to get rid of that hardened part, scraping is done. It is just scraped off. Hmm. For such lawns, you know, the grass is scraped at the ground level with the help of a kurpi and the scraping is usually done in the month of April, May. April to May is the best season of the year to do this scraping. Hmm. Note this. Then the last point is what? Insects and disease management. Last is our insects and disease management. Very important, no? Insects and disease management. When you are growing the, when you are maintaining a lawn, you should take care that the grasses are disease free and they are not getting infected by insects. Hmm. 
insects should not damage your lawn often it happens grubs hmm. grubs they do what they eat away the roots of grasses hmm. they eat away the roots of grasses it is very difficult to maintain if grubs this uh, problem with grubs are there hmm. when they eat away the roots of grasses they create a brownish dead patch hmm. so in order to control this what is done this is used to control this c h l o r o chloropyrifos chloropyrifos is used 2 ml per liter 2 ml per liter if this is spread this kills all these grubs and all hmm. then uh, other than grubs you know cut worms are there cut worms hmm they are there what do they do they also what do they do they the eat away the grass stem this one grub used to eat the roots they eat away eat away the stem they eat away the stem near the soil causing dead spots hmm. so to get rid of this what can be used quinol fos q u i n ol quinol fos that is also 2 ml per liter if you know these two names that is more than enough you don't need to know anything else um yes somebody is telling something next is disease ha huh? see we have talked about insect and disease management insect management two insects more than enough and two control measures next is disease what type of disease occur here sometimes you will see brown patches then you will you can see leaf spots see brown patches then you can see leaf spots here also two diseases are more than enough you just know two uh circular or irregular shaped brown patches often appear hmm, on the grass brown patches on the grass can appear you can treat this with mancozeb mancozeb it is a chemical mancozeb measurement is same 2 ml same measurement 2 ml per liter mancozeb is also used Two ml per liter. Hmm. And what is this leaf spot? Let's see. These are irregular brown leaf spot. Hmm. These are irregular, irregular brown leaf spot. Right? They can be got rid of by using sulfur dusting. Simple sulfur dusting. Nothing much. sulfur dusting that is also at 25 kg per hectare simple done so this is how we complete our entire lecture today we have learnt about bonsai its techniques then we have learnt about uh, its care and uh, its styles then we have learnt about the lawns how is it developed and how is it Uh, maintained the care and maintenance okay and these were the techniques for your uh, this uh, bonsai bonsai raising so this is how we come to an end of our lecture thank you so much children for coming and joining me with this lecture and before i end wishing you 
a very happy Independence Day. Thank you so much, children, for coming on a Sunday afternoon. This was well spent with all of you. Have a nice long weekend. Stay connected with me in case you have any doubts, any confusion. You can get back to me in the comment section or in the message box anywhere. Till then, thank you and a very happy Independence Day. Yes, Goodbye. Yes, yes. Thank you, ma'am. Same to you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much.